Welcome everybody to Rob's Metal Works. We have returned for the first show here in 2020 at the historic Aztec Theater. And man, what a great, great metal legend I'm bringing you today. I have with me the man, Rob Flynn of Machine Head. How you doing, sir? Good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm really excited uh, to be here with you today. Yeah, I yeah. love this place. This is probably my favorite venue in America. So I'm always oh, really? stoked to come. I love this wow. place. Just the vibe, you know, like the architecture. Yeah. It's fucking great area. It's a good vibe. Right next to the Riverwalk. I know. I love the Dude, <laughs> like, it's amazing. Alamo. I go to the Alamo every time I'm here. So, yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, you know, before we start talking about why we're here today, you know, I want to take a little a little jump back, you know. And, and at our age, in our tenure, you know, we, we've, we've come to the understanding that change is inevitable, inevitable and it always, always happens. Uh, the end of 2018 really saw the, the end of an era for a machine head, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I guess initially I want to start by asking, uh, did you kind of already kind of before it actually happened, did you see it coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. For, you know, for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, those guys wanted to move on and, you know, we still had a tour to do. Yeah. And so we went out and did the tour. And, you know, I, we already knew at that point before the tour. And so, you know, I felt like we ended it on a super yeah. classy note. You know, I got the crowd to chant their name and thank them every single night, like for everything that they've done. And, uh, you know, just to end it on a classy note, yeah. you know, like yeah. it was, it was a cool, it was a cool era. And then, you know, there was going to be a future. Yeah. And here we are. I uh, had a chance to sit with McLean uh, uh, last year and, and he was very, uh, very humble and grateful to you and said a lot of positive things that uh, you would, you know, give them recognition for their contributions to Machine Head every night on the farewell tour. So he was really happy about that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, how was the tour itself? Was it kind of bittersweet for you? I mean, were you sad or were you kind of excited about new opportunities? Um. I mean, I, I had my I had my eye on the future, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, whatever that meant, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what that meant, but it was it was an awesome tour, man. Yeah. Like, it was, like, people went fucking nuts, you know? Yeah. Like, the attendances were gay, like, people were losing their shit, and, and, and that's what it, you know, t to me, that it was a celebration, that's what I always said it was. It was a celebration of, of what we did and the music that we, we created, and, uh, and to just come out and have a fucking blast and, and live this moment with us, you know, one more time yeah. for what it was. Yeah. And when it was all said and done, you know, for me, you know, I was pretty sad, like, especially when everybody announced it, you know, I'm sure you saw the Facebook live, yeah. like I was crying and I was yeah. sad. Like it was a fucking, it was a, it was a tough time, but you know, like by the time I got on stage, like I never want to cry on stage. <laughs> so I was just like, <laughs> as long as, as long as I get through this first show right, right. in Sacramento, I'm good. You know, like, and I didn't cry there. So I was like, I'm not going to cry. And I didn't cry even on the last night. I didn't cry, oh, you know, like I was looking, it was just like, you know, like it was still to me like a celebration and that's what it was always going to be about. You know? It kind of seems too, uh, that you kind of really didn't miss a step before we knew it. You were, already had the wheels turning how soon after uh the end of that last catharsis run did you already start auditioning new people for the band because i know you went through auditions well, we started and stuff. jamming i started jam you know so like the, the day after the, the five minutes after the, the last <laughs> that, no five minutes after the facebook live oh, okay went out logan texted me <laughs> and i was just all really too wow. soon like too soon you know like it was it was funny and i just texted him back and said look too soon let me just like process everything that's going on right now and uh but then you know we 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 picked it up after the tour and i met with chris in december my manager and i sat down with chris just yeah. went out to dinner like hey like yeah, cool. let's feel this out and see if this is even you know something that we want to do you know chris had stop playing chris had been doing bmx for the last five years yeah. so he hadn't been playing drums at all and um and that was kind of my biggest thing i was just like wow that's a long time to Is step away from playing? the game yeah, yeah like it's a long time to step away from the game and yeah. you know to get back in shape and you know granted we had some time if we were going to do it but it was like let's you know let's feel it out and it was it was a great dinner you know we ended up hanging for a couple hours and just like shooting the shit and it was a great vibe and uh and then so we started jam he and i and jared started jamming first and then okay. logan came okay. 
end of the picture and and then right around that time I think we started doing the first auditions but it was probably like you know it was a few months kind of just getting through right. you know I'm sure he was pretty stoked Chris yeah yeah oh he's I mean, he's still stuck. I, <laughs> I, I see his postings I mean, every day. He's like a kid in a candy yeah, store. He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, fucking, you know. And yeah. it's, it's awesome. I mean, just to have that. He's always been a, you know, he's a big, loud, funny, like, rah, you know, kind of that John Bonham type of drummer. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. This like the crazy drummer guy. And that's him. And it's been awesome having that energy yeah. around, you know. It's so different than what was there before. And sure. it's just, you know, all the vibe. You know, we got Matt playing drums. And I have two, there's two machine heads. Machine heads yeah, opening for a machine head. Yeah, we're talking so about it that. Took yeah. people, it took people a second Look to wrap it. their heads around that. But it's uh, it's been awesome, man. It's been really awesome. And was was it always the plan to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Burn My Eyes? We we've been talking about it. I've been talking about it since 2015. You know, so I knew it was coming up, and you know, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a very. It's a pretty big. You know, it's a kind of a. I mean, I never thought we'd make it 25 years. You know, I remember. I remember uh, when we dropped Burn My Eyes, somebody came up to me. I, f I forget who it was. It was like, kind of like a you know like a record company guy or something. He's like, yeah, I could, I could see you guys last in like five years. And it wasn't <laughs> meant as a compliment. It wasn't meant as a compliment, but I was like, five years? Like, fuck, that's a long, you know, like that's a long time. Like if we last five years, that's awesome. You know, like fuck, we're playing music that's not on the radio. This is, you know, music that's very heavy and aggressive and it's not going to be picked up by the kind of, majority of stuff so yeah if we last five years so here we are 25 years later like it's you know i'm fucking so grateful and just incredible you know, incredible fans we have that have been supporting us and continue to support us and like it's fucking what it's about man very uh pivotal record in the life of many many uh metal heads um still always making you know the top metal uh album listings and for a long, long time, the bestseller at Roadrunner Records. I mean, really great record. Yeah, debut album. Yeah. And yeah, for yeah. a long time. So uh, when you think back to 1994 and the release of Burn My Eyes, what are your fondest memories of that time? And, and maybe uh, also of yourself. What are the fondest memories of myself? <laughs> <You> <laughs> said, well, I mean, know. Of that time, you know, obviously, you know, you were hungry. To yeah, go very out hungry. And prove yourself, yeah, for like, sure. You know, kind of like, I mean, we were fucking animals. You know what I mean? Like, I used to tell my. I mean, it, it, I look back on that dude from that era, and it's like I was pretty harsh. You know, like my girlfriend, who's now my wife at the time, you know, but she was my girlfriend at the time. I mean, I was just like, Machine Head's number one, and you're number two, and don't forget it. <laughs> I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just like wow. I had this fucking like just psychopathic drive man and you know like it I, I don't have to do that now you know like I look back at that and I go like that you know I couldn't have continued for the next 25 years like that but at that moment yeah. I just you know like it was just fucking you know I eat shit slept breathe everything machine head and that's kind of what it took you know like it yeah. takes a lot of discipline it takes a lot of drive it takes a lot of humility it takes a lot of thick skin and you know to just get through you know all the slings and arrows that are coming at you and to get you know to you know be humble about the success right. that you're having too because you know a lot of a lot of bands on roadrunner were kind of jealous you know like we came out of the foot i mean the shit went gold like right off the fucking bat we were stunned you know like we were like you know so to, to, to try and balance that all out you know it was a huge life lesson so it was a surprise to you that this record oh, became totally. so big i mean we i mean i felt like we were doing something totally different than yeah. what the bands were doing at the time but nobody i mean our, our i think our goal our goals were pretty modest back then you know like we wanted to we had two goals so we wanted to sell twenty thousand records worldwide it's a worldwide 20,000 records, which we thought was like, that's fucking that's crushing great. it for a debut album. That's fucking killing it. And we wanted to open the Slayer show at the Henry J. Kaiser in Oakland, which is our hometown. It was like the arena they had played, for, yeah. like, like a, not an arena, but it's like a, like a big convention hall. And uh, 
and dude, we came out, we sold fucking half a million records, and we Crazy. opened, you know, not just that Slayer, we opened that Slayer show in Oakland and every other date in the U.S., and then supported them over in Europe, and it was wow. just this crazy fucking wild ride, man. Wow. Yeah. I always think about the uh, the rowdy Rob Flynn when I see that Dynamo footage with you, you have the, no, the braids in here. Yeah. You always look so angry in that oh, show, it. man. Yeah, it crazy. was just and it was just crazy fucking high, looking at 130,000 people, <laughs> just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was awesome. So, I mean, I, I know uh, just from having followed you for so many years that, that you listen to all kinds of music. You like all kinds of music. So, uh, like back then, um, what, what do you think made that record just so raw and heavy? I mean, what was kind of influencing you? What were you, what, what were you jamming to at that time? Were you still really diversified with your musical taste I at that time? I wasn't listening to a lot of metal at the time. Right. You know, I, I had metal had kind of like, you know, it's hard to, you know, put this in context, but, you know, go back to 1993 where there's no internet and there's yeah. no cell phones and, and, you know, like life is more, you know, you're more disconnected. You know, we didn't have the ability to just like look up what's happening in anywhere in the world, you yeah. know? And so, um, you know, metal, you know, this is post black album, you know, all the thrash bands have kind of gone towards that. And then, Faith No More and Primus has come out and everybody's kind of either going like kind of funk mm -hmm. whatever or, you know, Chili Peppers this way or, you know, Metallica, Black Album style. And for me, I i had always loved punk rock and hardcore. And, you know, going back to my early days, like my second show ever was seeing DRI on the Violent Pacification EP, mm -hmm. which was like when they were the fucking, you know, they were maniacs drawing nothing but like SF skinheads. Like it right. was crazy. And so... I, I kind of re-dug back into punk and hardcore. Like, yeah. that's what I was listening to a lot of. A lot of, a lot of Alice in Chains, a lot of, still like a lot of like the later day grunge, you know, Soundgarden, stuff like yeah. that. And a lot of hip hop, you know, like a yeah. lot of, a lot of hip hop. I was still loving NWA and Public Enemy and Naughty by Nature and, you know, like all the kind of whatever the rap stuff from that time that was hitting was. And, you know, we, I was a single guy, so I'm like, you know, the metal shows didn't have any girls <laughs> and so like you know so i'm going to like raves and shit because that's where girls are right. and you know me and my friends are like okay we want to get laid like let's yeah. go let's go to the fucking rave you know like we're not gonna go to we're not gonna go to the metal show because there's right. fucking no chicks there now right. and so uh you know so i and, and i didn't necessarily enjoy it but just you know you're kind of like exposing yourself to different shit and then you know that's just kind of and we were all like living in Oakland and yeah. it was just a fucking Oakland at that point was a very um you know it was pretty we were like the Bay Area was just coming out of a depression like the economy of the Bay Area yeah. and so from the 80s to the early 90s and then you know that just all played an effect on it you know yeah. like just being around we were living in the ghetto and you know you're constantly exposed to the urban music of the time and right. and that you know getting in a lot of fights it was like pretty gnarly pretty gnarly time period for us and so i think that all had an effect on it yeah. as well lyrically you know too um burn my eyes really just you know covered some really harsh realities that we had to deal with and i always i always listen to like uh realize 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 you know right. and a lot of the the sound bites you had in there and you're talking about you know hate hate crimes and and racism and all kinds of things that we were having to deal with obviously in, in your audio and still you know we kind of see some of those things today when you think about that song and you think about what's happening in 2020 uh doesn't seem like that much has changed it not not a lot you know <laughs> i don't want to say it's gotten worse because in a lot of ways it's gotten better but i think that you know i think that now people can hide behind their camera you know i think yeah yeah and you know you see a lot more of it now because of that and i think that you know the powers that be have kind of enabled a lot of that racism you know and empowered a yeah. lot of it and so you see it a lot more now i think that the you know the biggest thing that i see is just like the vast uh you know the income inequality like that's yeah. to me what i see is a lot different from back then like you know we were all kind of you know, you never saw that extreme wealth that you see now where it's right. like 26 people own, you know, $3.8 trillion of the world's economy and yeah. the remaining, you know, 300, <laughs> whatever it is, 3, point, there, 3 billion yeah. people in the world own yeah. like nothing, you know, like that extreme income inequality is, I right. think, the main thing. And, you know, 
I mean, bil billionaires back then, like, nobody was a billionaire. You know what I mean? And now, like, the fucking sheer number of billionaires, is, it's fucking staggering, you know? Yeah. And it has a, a crazy effect on people, you know? I think that, you know, we're all struggling. I think that we're all fighting for, you know, our own piece of the pie just because we're trying to live. And I think mm -hmm. it's just harder and harder, you know? Yeah. I mean, the president can sit there and say how great the economy is, but... Yeah, like try living in fucking San Antonio on 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. Like it ain't going to fucking happen, you know? Like it'll never happen, you know? And I live in California, it's even more expensive there, yeah. you know? And, you know, sure the economy's doing great, the stock market's doing great. That don't mean we're doing great. Yeah. 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 Uh um I had heard a rumor that Roadrunner was going to re-release Burn My Eyes with some bonus tracks and some rarities and then uh was is that was that true and i and also i'd also heard that you weren't happy about that there did you yeah. didn't want that well yeah they kind of they kind of go through these things all road runner you know <laughs> where like they just don't bother to tell us anything and then all of a sudden we see something that came out and we're like hey man like you can't just do that yeah. like you, <laughs> like like this is our like we own this shit like you can't just do that right and so uh you know there might have been a time there might have been a time like on the 20th anniversary there might have been a time yeah. when it was happening but but i i think we put the kibosh on it because you know they're getting a little they're going a little rogue yeah 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 you don't hear too much about them that yeah. much um so once you kind of were kind of announcing the, the reunion with with chris and, and logan you did that live video the live re-recording of burn my eyes yes. i've seen all the videos they're really cool man wow. really cool uh is that going to be released on on cd mm -hmm. yeah. or? it's coming out on yeah. everything yeah nice. yeah we're selling it on we've been selling it on uh vinyl but the whole thing came out and oh, it's I yeah yeah it's supposed to be here but uh Customs held up the fucking thing, so now we're like following. It's following us to the next city and yeah. constantly fucking so it up. Somebody on the tour is gonna get the, the record. So at some point, you're gonna be getting the vinyl. First few shows are missing it though, unfortunately. I'm sure they'll go pretty yeah, damn fast. Now it's gonna be, you know, some of the tracks are already up on Spotify and oh, okay. you know, all the digital outlets, and it'll eventually come out on CD. But yeah, it was, you know, a lot of people were a little confused about why we did it. Like they thought it was like a proper re-record you know for right, us right. it was just we were having so much fun in the studio when we got back together it, you know i i you know i worked i mean we rehearsed right next to a recording studio i was like you know what let's just fucking capture this crazy energy it was just us live in the studio so like you can hear all the between song yeah. banter cool. and talking and bullshit cool. like it's not like a re-record like suicidal did that re-record exodus right. did a re-record right. like that's not that's, that's not what this was right, you know right, this right. was just us having fun live in the studio goofing off trying to just remember right. these fucking songs spontaneously and, and have fun and you know we wanted to share that with the world because we thought it was so infectious and and great yeah, don't ever re-record Burn My Eyes. That, yeah. that would be a yeah. sin. I remember when Exodus did the Bonded by Blood thing, and I, at first the idea was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, oh, no. I hear you. I mean, oh, no. and, and for me, Bonded by Blood was like part of my DNA. Right. Like, I know every drum fill. I know every guitar riff that's like off right. time. Like and Nothing against just, Rob yeah. Dukes, but, you know, no. No, yeah, I no. hear you. The suicidal okay. one, too. The suicidal yeah. one drove me crazy. <laughs> uh, you, you alluded to the tour earlier. Um, you know, you brought in uh, a new guitar player and uh, a new drummer, and there's two parts to the show. Yeah. So part one, all classic yeah. uh, discography of Machine Head. Part two, Logan and Chris come out and do Burn My Eyes. Yeah. Three hour long set. Fuck yeah. how, how, how beat are you after that three hour long set? I'm not, you know, like it, it gets easier. <laughs> I was pretty beat after Phoenix the other night, which was yeah. the opener, you know, like it's all, that first show is always rough, yeah. but uh, you get stronger and, you know, I've been training. It's, it's awesome, man. People love it. Like our fans love it. And you know, it's, it, it took, like I said, it, it took people a second to kind of wrap their head around, like, what are you right. doing? You know, but like once cool. they see it, like it totally makes sense and it's fucking, it's awesome. And it's I guess awesome. it's easier too for the, the other guys in the band too not to have to learn like you didn't want Chris and, and Logan to have to learn all those old songs or exactly. you know too exactly. much too much yeah um, and so let's re quickly talk about Vogue and, and Matt uh, and what I found a little surprising 
and, and maybe kind of not because we live in such a small world these days, but, but those cats are from a, across the pond, mm -hmm. musicians from over there. So when you were auditioning guys, it wasn't just like American music. It was like, throw, everybody throw your hat in there. Yeah, I mean... Or did you kind of know those cats well, already? Well, we knew... I had no... Matt was our... Matt worked for us, so oh. Matt was on our crew, our road crew, oh. and he. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he played fucking drums. I was just like, uh, You're I, like I walked by with that. I was just like, I was like, you play drums. I was like, fuck you. So, so then he like kind of threw his hat in the ring, like, yeah. hey, let me let me take an, an audition. And I was like, yeah, I was like, all right. And then he fucking sent in a video. We had everybody do a video first. Oh, okay. You know, that was just kind of like a way to help, kind of, yeah. you know, streamline the process, and. It's fucking, he killed it. Like, we were like, oh my God, like, it was fucking awesome. And so, uh, you know, we joke about him now. All the time. I had no idea that he even played drums. Yeah. And then, Vogue, same thing with Vogue. We had been doing guys for a while, and I had, I had met Vogue a few times, just, you know, touring. And I had, I had caught Decapitated when they played right. the Fillmore probably about nine years ago, I guess. And they were fucking awesome. And, uh, and so, him and I, it's funny because, I go to this gym called Diablo Barbell, and I started training there about six months ago. Right. And it was just like this pretty transformative thing for me, like just really helped get me stronger and more into yeah. shape. And and the and the dude who owns the gym is like death metal maniac. Like oh, that's wow. all he fucking listens to, and he just blasts death metal at this fucking gym. <laughs> the whole and it's great, you know. Like you go into a gym, and it's like dance music or whatever. Yeah. Like no, he's playing like origin and morbid angel and can't, like it's just like the wow. most and he was playing a lot of decapitated and and you know like a, a lot of the bands he was playing like i wasn't that familiar with the music i'm not that big of a death metal head yeah. and uh but then every time he'd play decapitated and my ear would kind of be drawn to it and i'd be like who's this i was like this is this is pretty good shit he's like oh this is decapitated and so this happened a few times over a few weeks and then the last time I was just like, is this decapitated? He's like, it's decapitated. He's like, you really like decapitated? He was like, dude. He was like, that fucking guitar player is sick. So we had this conversation about how great of a guitar player Vogue is. He had taken like a Skype lesson from him a few years back and all this shit. He's like, fucking, he's awesome. So I'm walking out of the gym and I open up my Instagram DMs and I see someone's DM'd me. Vogue has DM'd me on Instagram. Wow, wow. And I'm just like, wow, that's weird, you know, so, yeah. like, I was just talking about, you know, so, we kind of go back and forth, and he's like, oh, you're coming to Poland, I can't wait to see this, the tour, you know, like, I'm really excited, you know, like, let's hang out again, and I was just like, yeah, cool, let's hang out, so then this goes on for, like, a few days, just kind of, like, back and forth, talking, and, uh, and he, at, at this point, we had kind of, like, some of, like, everybody who was coming in for the auditions was a great, player like fucking you know top like awesome fucking super skilled at everything you know the, the one thing with machine head and i think it's because we're like you know bay area metal like when you fucking play those rhythms man like you gotta fucking dig in hard you know right. every pick has to scrape the string you know like that's what that's what the sound is right. and a, a lot of people just weren't coming with that which was weird for us right. but you know i think it's more because it's like a bay area thing you know that's what we grew up with that thrash right. that thrash thing has that fucking heavy gary holt james hetfield you know brutal hand right. yeah. and uh so i was just kind of complaining to vog about that like that a lot of people and he's like would you ever consider trying a guy like me out and i was like you know he's in poland he's in another band and i was just like i was like yeah i mean i don't there's no like no reason i wouldn't you know uh you know so i put him in touch with steve and said hey you know he'll get you the songs to learn so he gets him the songs to learn an hour later he sends back imperium just like as a, an audio test like we have everybody film it mm -hmm. and then just make sure that you know you can hear their playing to the background track they're playing right. to and fucking Steve sends it to me. Steve's like my, my production manager. And he's just like, dude, listen to this shit. And he sends me the fucking video. And I watch it. And I'm like, oh, my wow. God. Like, he's just murdering the shit. Yeah. I mean, like, he's playing Imperium better than I could at that point. And I was just like, wow, dude. So I was like, yeah, send us what else you got. And it was fucking, like, it was just kind of a no-brainer. He just played it so fucking, you know, 
great player. I mean, just so much feeling and just a fucking devastating right now. Super nice guy. I talked to him a bunch of times. And I hope he okay. messaged the gym owner and thanked him. I did. I did. I did. I did. I, so then I talked to him. You know, I'm just like, dude, Vogue's going to try out. Like, fucking. And he's just like, what? Like, that's crazy. You know, and so then, then Ron, got you got free there. membership for a year. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck, right, Ted? Free right. membership. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. So, uh, the tour started on the 16th. Um, you know, we're not too far in. Uh, I've seen all the social media. It looks like everybody's having a great time. Great photos. Um, you're doing some really cool stuff for the fans too. The meet and greets and the guitar. That was good. Yeah, that was yeah. burn my eyes guitar. It's really cool. Lots of cool stuff. The stage guitar. No, yeah. Stage played guitar. Yeah, yeah man. So. The Obviously, the reception has been fabulous. It, it's been fucking overwhelming at times, man. Like, it's really, you know, it hits you, you know, to think what was going on a year later, right. you know, a year ago to, like, be where we are now is, like, pretty, it's humbling. And it's fucking, you know, it's a really, it's a really good feeling, man. You know, it makes us feel proud of the music we made. And then I always see, like, some rabid kid getting the, the most valuable Rager shirt. Yes. Who chooses that, the person to win the shirt? I let Jared choose that. <laughs> okay, yeah, oh, Jared really? chooses them every day. I always know. see those, those kids. Are like, yes, yeah, just fucking shirts. whoever fucking raged the hardest, knew all the words, <laughs> banged the hardest, you know, they get it. Yeah. You know, sometimes, cool. yesterday we could have given it, we could, given it? We could have given it to this group of uh, dudes in the pit yesterday. It's usually somebody on the front row. Right. That's who we give the most right. valuable Rager to. There was this group of fucking dudes in the pit there was one guy and he just cut he was like directing everybody they'd form this big circle in the center of the circle pit and all just like banging in a wow. circle towards each other i was like this is fucking you know they formed a wall at one point was fucking doing this wall but yeah dallas it yeah. was fucking it was rad wow. it, was, it was fucking awesome wow uh well good man i'm glad uh everything is going well for you and i know it will continue to do so uh you released a new track do or die back in october yeah. And I remember I was like, holy shit, already a new song. Really raging song, yeah, speedy, huge fucking breakdown. Yeah, got another song dropping uh, in February, too. All right. Yeah. Uh, is that, is, was that one of the seven songs that you had written? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been writing. I started writing. A few, I mean, I'm always writing. You know, like I just kind of am writing. And, uh, you know, I, I think what the plan going forward is, is we're going to write and then record and then rather than <clears throat> focus on an album every three years which is kind of the pattern we've gotten into right. like about every three to four years we drop a record to just have a steady stream of standalone singles and then some of those singles may end up on the next record along with probably five or six other new right. songs okay, cool. or they may not you know we're still trying to figure it out but i just you know i feel like the i love the how the music industry's changed i love like the just the the power of the digital stuff and the ease of getting it out there to the fans and and uh and i think we're just going to keep on doing that man like yeah. i love i love the idea of dropping a new song every three to four months yeah. rather than every you know an right. album every three to four right. years right. you know and so we're going to keep on doing that and i'm excited about it you know do or die went over great it's already over a million streams on spotify you know this over other half song, a million the video over yeah, half a million yeah, views totally. i mean this is like we yeah. dropped it out of nowhere like no announcement yeah. no anything just like you know here you go and it you know didn't get you know this isn't fucking getting played on the radio or anything right. so it was it was really cool man and i and i'm excited to be able to do more of that and you know the fans seem to be excited about that too do you need uh obviously i'm, I'm taking making an assumption but uh vogue and matter are still going to continue as official members of machine head after yeah. after this tour yeah but you know i've been writing with chris and logan you know oh. logan, logan and i have already collaborated on a new song wow. so you know i think i think that's another thing that's that's killer about it rather yeah. than the pressure of a record you know to like be able to do these kind of standalone things yeah. and and just see how it goes and you know i don't know where the fuck it's gonna go you know nobody you know, can, can look into the crystal ball. I just, I just want to keep on writing music and dropping music. You know, music's been such a powerful force in my life. And, you know, if these guys want to write music, like fucking let's do it, you know, let's, let's see what comes of it and, and yeah. see where it goes and get lost. You know what I mean? Like get lost in the music. Yeah. Will it continue kind of in that really heavy vein, uh, what you see forthcoming with the new music I mean, from Machine Head? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be machine head. You know what I mean? Like it's always going to have that heaviness. It's always right. going to have that vibe. It's going to go everywhere. You know, some songs could be like darkness within some right. songs could oh, be like fucking aesthetics of hate. You know, right. it's, it's everywhere in between. 
I was looking at, uh, you know, I had to put my shuffle on Machine Head today. And, uh, you know, Unto the Locust is just like one of my favorite records that you guys, uh, people always talk about the, the blackening. And I'm like, dude, what about Unto the Locust? It's, you know, Darkness you know, Within. You know, that record got like kind of panned upon release. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's great to hear you say that. Yeah. Like, it kind of, it took a long time to get out of the shadow of the blackening, right, you know, because right. it was the record after the blackening. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, now when we play those songs, it's like, it's, it's, it's big, you know, like those songs had a big effect yeah. on people, you know, time, time has, it stood the test of time well. Yeah. I mean, I, and I was thinking too, like, shit, this record's like nine years old already. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So, and I love the acoustic version too, of Darkness Within, really cool stuff. Right on, man. Thank um, you. Yeah, there's some of that coming, you know, there's some shit like that's cool. coming. Cool. Well, that's, that's you. That's Rob, that's Rob Flynn. That's Machine Head. I mean, we, we kind of expect some of that from you, you know. Uh, let's talk about you now a little bit. And uh, uh, I read your post uh, at the end of last year the, from your, the general journal. And, uh, you know, you've always kind of been a candid guy, you know. And you, in that posting, you kind of really put yourself out there. You talked a little bit about the crying and, and the ups and downs. And as I was reading about, you said, you know, here's some, a listing of things that I'm proud of that I did oh, right, this right, past right, yeah. year, like the ac little accomplishments and the big accomplishments. Right, right. Uh, right. Things like uh, your training, you're, you're trying to, you know, tr trim down. Yeah. Uh, maybe not drinking or kind of sobriety a little bit, no, testing yeah. the waters there yeah. a little bit. <laughs> okay. Here, uh, I, gotta, I go back and forth on that okay, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also... Uh, sometimes they just take a break, though. You know, like, sometimes yeah. I'll be hitting it too hard, and I'm like, all right, step away for a minute. Yeah. Uh, relationships, too. Relationships, uh, family. Uh, and I, I put this one in bold. You said, um, I'm happy I'm, I'm being a, a good boss. Okay. What do you mean by that? Was I so? Was, is it like big accomplishments? That was little, well, that was the thing was too. A, I was gonna ask you about. I I was like, I think this one. If it was me, this one would be in the big, and then this big one would be in the little. I don't know, yeah. but nonetheless, it, that one you had as a little accomplishment, okay. being the good boss. Bo good boss. Yeah, or working to become a good uh, yeah, boss. Or, yeah. yeah, like I'm always trying to like. Yeah, I want to, you know, I want to be a good boss to these guys. And that's part I, of the relationship. I wanna, yeah, I want to have, you know, I want to be a good leader. I want to be, you know, I want to constantly improve that across the board. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what's going to make us all, you know, high tide rises all ships. You know what I mean? I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. So trying to do stuff like that. And, you know, I think I had, I think I, I think I quit coffee. Wow. That was one of, yeah, that was a hard one. Wow. <laughs> that was a really hard one. Quitting caffeine. Um, you know, I think that, I think putting that out there kind of, you know, it makes in some ways when you lay it all out there like that, you know, because social media right. has kind of, you know, we're all a little dishonest on social media, you know, like I got a friend who just got a divorce and like, you'd never know it from his, so, you know, like he's like, oh, fuck it. and I'm just like, you know, like we're all kind of, you know, we only, we only show the good stuff, right. you know what I mean? Right. And I think that that's like, it's, it's not good for society, you know, right. like it's not all good stuff. You know, right. that's why I went on that Facebook live when, you know, half my band quit and I yeah. put it out there like, Hey, you know, like this is what it is and this is what life is. And this moment sucks. And I'm obviously fucking torn up about it, but like, this is fucking life. You know, this is, uh, you know, you're going to get with machine head, you're going to get the good, the bad and the ugly. And you know, that's, you know, I, I of course love showing the good too, but I think you got to show that bet. So I had to put, you know, things that I felt need improving, my little accomplishments, the things that I maybe didn't do as good in the past that I'm doing better now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So shit like that. You know, I think it's important to put that out there and, and, and be authentic, you know, to be yeah. genuine. And I think people uh, really connect with that. Your fans can see that uh, in your videos and, and what you write. Uh, big accomplishment, too. Just a couple more things, Rob. Uh, the solo album of covers. Can you share a little bit about that? Uh, I, I do this thing called, for about seven years, I've done this thing called Rob Flynn and Friends. It's just a thing yep. around my birthday where we just get fucking yep. drunk and play fucking cover songs for three hours, and it's super fun. And so uh, I, got, I got some of the guys who did it with me to come in and do just some of the fucking big ones that we did. The recording studio. And re yeah, recorded yeah. it. Like I said, I, you know, I own a recorder studio right. now, and I rehearse right next door to one. So, uh, 
So we we just did it, and it was like fucking just a few days, all live in the studio nice. again, just kind of like a live in the studio thing, and it was just rough and fun and funny, and we just had a fucking blast. And at some point, it's gonna come out, yeah. you know. I gonna go in and do a second round of uh i got i got one group of guys and we did kind of like classic rock stuff and then i got another group of guys and we did like a bunch of like 90s hip-hop so we did like snoop no we did snoop dog and we did nwa and like all this stuff and it was like these guys came from like a funk kind of there was the guys in fungo mungo so like a really solid like legit so like the fucking grooves were just ridiculous and uh so it's gonna come out and it'll just be like a thing Uh, eventually i might tour it if anybody gives a shit (laughs) you know like people may not care and if they don't that's fine you know it's just for us to like go out and have fun and if if there's an excuse for us to go tour around america and play these fucking songs as rob flynn and friends like i'd fucking totally do it in a heartbeat because it it is always a blast you know everybody has a good time we do a reggae version of careless whisper get everybody to smoke weed during the whole thing and like you know it's just like (laughs) It's, it's some good shit. It's okay. a good time. Yeah, I think people would like to see that. Uh, lastly, Rob, uh, share a little bit about, I think people are coming on to your No Fucking Regrets podcast. Yeah. Why'd you start doing that? Uh, you know what? I just, you know, I was having these um, amazing conversations with my friends. Like, sometimes we'll just have these crazy, random, all over the fa- yeah. place conversations. Kind of like what I've been doing with the Facebook Lives, you know, because I do a Facebook Live every week. Right. You know, most people don't. Most people only see the big ones that make the news, right. but like I'm actually doing them every week. And, uh, you know, I just, I was like, people need to hear this conversation. Right. Like, this is just such a fucking ridiculously stupid and funny and, you know, inspiring conversation right. that. I want to share this. And Jamie Josta, who's d- done a podcast for a while, yep. was like, dude, your voice is killer. Like, you got to do yeah. a podcast. He's like, you'd be perfect for it. And I was like, just, I'm lazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm lazy. Like, I just fucking, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I won't. And then uh, and then finally, I just got off my ass. And I, the last time I was on the podcast, the producer came down of his podcast. And he met with me. And he was just like, dude, like, we got to do this. It'd be fucking awesome. And he kind of like... He probably got me more excited about it than, like, you know, made me believe in it more than I believed in it myself. And so uh, I started doing it, and I started throwing it out there, and just a bunch of fucking people were just like, fuck yeah, let's fucking do it. Like, I was like, all right, fuck. (laughs) So I just had Tony La Russa, the Baseball Hall of Fame manager on there. You know, I had, I got, you know, I got life on the road shit where we're just talking about bullshit. Um, It's been awesome. You know, it's been fucking killer. So it covers the whole gamut, not just metal, everything. I I had Rob Grammy nominated, you know, Rob Cavastani, Death Angel. So I had him on there, you know, and I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have all walks of life. I just did Rob Dukes from Exodus. You know, he's going into comedy now. So trying to keep it all over the place, you know, not just metal dudes or band dudes, but like, you know, just life dudes that I'd come across, you know. Every time I talk to La Russa, it's always like this. You know, I mean, a great. You know, he's one of the greatest baseball managers because he's one of the best inspiring man managers. And so every time you talk to him, you're just like, yeah, like I can fucking do it. And, you know, like you're just like, I can do anything. And so like I wanted, I really wanted to get him on there. And yeah. it was fucking great. You know, cool. it was funny. And, you know, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing more of that. Um, Rob, anything I missed? Anything? Uh, I think you covered it all. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> I think we only had 15 minutes. We're going on a half an hour here. So. <laughs> and Luke's giving me the evil eye. Okay, so, Rob, uh, any last words for the fans around the world who will see this interview? Hey, this motherfucker has been interviewing me for fucking years, years. man. Give him all the respect, man. Thank you for having me. Once again, thank you. Remember, everyone out there, for those of you who have not yet caught the 25th anniversary Burn My Eyes tour, go out there, support it, look for Rob's podcast, look for all the new music coming out from the man. You saw him only on Rob's Metalworks. Yeah, the OGs.